guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell based on the title, today we are talking about Givenchy as well as the recent departure of Matthew Williams. He is leaving Givenchy as of January 1st, 2024. I thought we would talk a little bit about the brand, his tenure as Givenchy and what's next. So Givenchy is a French luxury house. It was founded by Hubert de Givenchy in 1952. He was known for his very elegant and sophisticated designs with a focus on couture, ready to wear clothing, accessories, and perfumes. And I think a lot of people heavily associate Givenchy with Audrey Hepburn. Throughout her acting career, she famously wore his creations and Givenchy is also associated with many other notable personalities, celebrities, and other public figures. But Audrey Hepburn and Givenchy had a very close relationship, very close friendship. She was famously known for wearing his creations. And over the years, Givenchy has expanded its product offerings, including accessories, footwear, fragrances. The brand continues to be associated with luxury craftsmanship and this timeless style. And it's worth noting that in 1988, Givenchy joined LVMH, and then in 1995, Hubert de Givenchy left the company. And immediately right after that, John Galliano took over as creative director from 1995 to 1996, and then shortly after, left to work at Dior. And from 1996 to 2001, Alexander McQueen took over as creative director. From 2001 to 2004, we saw Julian McDonald take over as creative director. And then from 2005 to 2017, Ricardo Tisci led the brand. And this is in recent memory when the brand experienced probably its most impactful and greatest levels of commercial success. If you remember the late 2000s and 2010s, Ricardo Tisci Givenchy was definitely one of the hot brands of that time period. And Ricardo Tisci, he really brought this level of dark romanticism, but then sort of injected moments of streetwear, but there was this still strong presence of couture. But then he left the brand in 2017. And from 2017 to 2020, Claire Way Keller was the creative director. And then most recently from 2020 to 2023, we saw the era of Matthew Williams. And Matthew Williams gained recognition for designing clothing for Lady Gaga and Kanye West. He was also part of the Ben Trill Collective with Virgil Abloh and Heron Preston. Matthew Williams, he's the founder and the creative director of the fashion label 1017 Elix 9SM, which he launched in 2015. And Matthew Williams as a designer is known for his technical innovation as well as his industrial and streetwear influences when it comes to his fashion during his period at Givenchy. We also saw the sort of industrial influence which he was known for at his own brand. His designs often took inspiration from industrial and utilitarian aesthetics. When we look at his hardware buckles, his heavy zippers, that industrial element is heavily felt. And then we also felt his streetwear roots. Another core aspect of Matthew Williams' work at Givenchy, along with many other contemporary designers, is he really did engage in collaborations with other brands. Collaborations really provided an opportunity to explore different creative directions, as well as to reach a broader audience. Him being at Givenchy, it was anticipated that he would bring this very fresh, modern perspective to a very historic fashion house. The use of innovative materials, streetwear influences, fused with the luxury and the heritage associated with the name of Givenchy. So why is Matthew Williams leaving? What happened? Well, New York Times fashion critic Vanessa Friedman once wrote, the problem is a year into Matthew Williams' tenure, it's almost unclear what his Givenchy is. You can tell there are those like streetwear elements. There are some collections that almost lean into sort of a Balenciaga aesthetic, but then there's also this almost gothic aesthetic, which feels very Ricardo Tisci, but I also think it's very true to Matthew Williams style. So we also see that there. And then there's also towards some of the later collections, an emphasis on tailoring. But as Vanessa Friedman states, it wasn't totally clear what this new direction was as a brand, or it wasn't at least clear to a luxury consumer base. But looking back at some of his creations, you really do see that he did have some very core signature elements like the lock bags, the shark boots with the lock. The Voyou bag was another recent bag that we saw worn by celebrities. But one thing as I'm reading these articles, a lot of them are suspecting how the sales have potentially gone down. The thing about LVMH is they don't reveal individual sales figures unless they're really there to praise it. Many have suspected that the sales have gone down for Givenchy. Many had mentioned that the pandemic could have played into this as a lot of brands have struggled. Of course, there 
are some brands that have enormously succeeded. It definitely did have an impact on Givenchy, I'm sure. And then another point I want to talk about is the luxury customer base was quite confused, at least these past few years, right? Like when you go from Ricardo Tichy to Claire White Keller, who is, I think, a very nice designer for Givenchy. It almost feels like she's a really nice match for the brand. For other reasons, sales weren't translating in the way LVMH wanted them to. So you go from this very like elegant feminine approach to Givenchy to this streetwear meets like goth, but then also has like tailoring. I think at this point for the luxury customer, it's kind of confusing for them. It's kind of confusing for them to know what this brand is about. Going back to Vanessa Friedman's point, it's not really clear, not even just what Matthew Williams is doing, but I think just right now at this point, Givenchy as a brand is kind of struggling to articulate what its vision is as a luxury brand. And when you look at like the marketing strategy, like one collaboration with Tiffany, which actually totally makes sense for like a brand like Givenchy, but then a collaboration with Disney. And it's like they were trying to experiment with different marketing tactics. It wasn't that clear for an already confused brand. And then the final point in terms of what happened was I think there's also Matthew Williams' desire to focus on his own brand. It was stated earlier this year that his own brand secured an investment from Adrian Cheng. In the statement from Givenchy, it's Williams plans to fully dedicate himself to the development of his own brand after his departure. Perhaps that's where Matthew Williams's true heart is, right? And you just look at Alexander McQueen, right? From his tenure at Givenchy, he obviously left to focus on his own label and he was able to create something even greater, right? It's not necessarily a bad thing for Matthew Williams. I do think he can rise out of this, been able to secure an investment and we'll see where he goes next. So now a lot of people are speculating what is next for Givenchy. Several names have been thrown around. A lot of people are saying Alessandro Michele. I think there's a lot of speculation that he would be a really good fit for Fendi. Other names have been thrown around like Sarah Burton, considering she just left Alexander McQueen and Alexander McQueen was at Givenchy. And a lot of other people are, are hoping that LVMH gives a younger emerging designer a chance that hasn't been able to lead a major brand when you think about like a Simone Rocha or a Grace Wales Bonner that haven't yet led a major your house, other names Nancy Dojaka or Robert Wen would also be potential picks. Also Hyder Ackerman has been suggested. And of course, there's also the possibility given what's happened at Louis Vuitton, a celebrity, musician, a pop cultural figure becomes creative director of the house. That's a possibility as well. A lot of people are speculating Alessandro Michele could go here if he isn't going to Fendi. Personally, I would love to see for a brand like Givenchy, Simone Rocha, or Grace Wales Bonner, or even like a Robert one, a newer, younger designer, but I do think LVMH I get the impression that a lot of these same names you're seeing are probably gonna stay in these positions until the sales potentially decline. Now, when you think about the current creative directors at these big houses, right? We have Nicola Gasquier, Maria Grazia Curie, Kim Jones at Fendi Women's and Dior Men's, Eddie Slaman at Celine, J.W. Anderson at Loewe. These creative directors, many of them have proven themselves in terms of sales. But I do think during this period where luxury is in decline, what LVMA want to start with an emerging designer at Givenchy or will they want to go with an established designer like an Alessandro Michele? Regardless, I think Givenchy is a very beautiful brand. It has so much potential from like a cultural perspective. It's like one of these sleeping giant brands where just like the right creative director at the right time, the right vision and the right marketing strategy, right? Like all of these have to align that it can be a really successful brand. And I think Matthew Williams, he did stay true to himself. He brought his own perspective. This wasn't the right match. And I hope he does really well with his own brand. So yes, that is my video. And I would love to know, is there a creative director you would like to see at Givenchy? Personally, I just, I would prefer like an emerging designer. I actually would really like to see Grace Wales Bonner, or I would love to see a Simone Rocha. Love to know who would you love to see at Givenchy. Thank you so much for joining me in another one. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.